Okay, Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So today we are going into the next subtopic for chapter 4 which is Tokyo Metri. Okay, so let's have a look at the learning outcome first. So there are quite a few of learning outcome for this particular topic. So the first one is to have a look at the stoichiometric mass calculation. Okay, and then we have to define the limiting rectangle and also theoretical and actual yield and also percentage yield. And lastly, we are going to perform calculation involving the three things that you have been defining here. Okay, but today we are only going to be covering the part A. Okay, so the stoichiometric mass calculation. So you must be wondering right now, what is stoichiometry? So let's have a look at the stoichiometry. So what is stoichiometry? So basically class, stoichiometry is the quantitative relationship. So if we say about quantitative relationship, meaning yang uh, pasal nombor lah. Okay, ada kaitan dengan value. So it is between products and reactant. Okay, so we want to see the relationship between the products and also reactants in terms of apa? Dia punya number of moles sebenarnya. Okay, so between the number of moles of the products and reactants in a chemical reaction. Okay, so basically sebenarnya yang yang stoichiometric coefficient, yang nombor-nombor mole yang depan chemical equation yang kamu balance tu kan. So benda tu sebenarnya sangat penting sebenarnya untuk kita tengok relationship between reactant and also product ataupun between reactant dengan reactant or maybe between product dengan product. Okay, so it depends lah sebenarnya. Kita boleh tengok relationship semua benda yang ada dalam chemical equation tersebut. So basically, stoichiometry, uh, stoichiometry it can be used to calculate quantity such as the amount of products. So amount of product kat sini class, it depends uh, it might be in terms of mass, okay? It might be in terms of mole, depends. Uh, ataupun apa lagi yang kita belajar? Kita dah belajar pasal volume. Or another one, kita dah belajar pasal molarity, pasal concentration, uh, okay? So, we can use this to calculate the amount of products that can be produced with given reactants and also maybe kalau dia ada bagi info pasal percentage yield juga. So, it depends, okay? Cuma percentage yield ni nanti, let on kita tengok lah. Okay, and then stoichiometric calculation can also predict how elements and components diluted in standard solution react in experimental condition. So, yang ni ada kaitan dengan macam uh, titration. Okay, remember the titration yang kamu dah buat waktu pre-lab uh, and then uh, waktu lab pun kamu dah tengok apa relationship antara acid dengan base kan? So, that is actually stoichiometry. Uh, uh, stoichiometry relationship uh, okay so bila kamu relate apa kaitan acid dengan base tu yang kamu cakap uh, one mole of acid reacts with one mole of uh, base so that is stoichiometry relationship sebenarnya kamu dah guna dah pun okay but now we we getting into like apa benda sebenarnya lah kita nak belajar betul-betul okay so for example uh, let's say we have this particular chemical reaction here. Okay, so we have the calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid producing calcium chloride and also carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so we want to see now what is the relationship between all five compounds here. Okay, so basically class, one mole of calcium carbonate, so ini one mole, dekat bagian depan ni one mole, reacts with two moles of HCl so, since kedua-dua ni adalah reactant kan, dia berada sebelah um, kiri of the equation, therefore itu adalah reactant. So, tu kita cakap pasal calcium carbonate ni, dia react with HCl. Okay? To yield, so perkataan yield dekat sini is basically to produce lah sebenarnya. Okay? Produce ataupun product sebenarnya. So, in this particular case, kita itu sebenarnya bermaksud produce lah. To produce one mole of calcium chloride one mole of carbon dioxide and also one mole of water. So, mana datang one, one, one ni semua kita tengok yang uh, stoichiometry coefficient yang berada dekat depan kita punya equation tu. Tapi yang penting adalah equation tu sendiri sebenarnya kelas, it needs to be balanced first. Okay? So, it is very important for you to balance the equation first ataupun to double check whether the equation has been balanced or not and then you can actually do the stoichiometry relationship between all the things inside the chemical reaction. Okay? So, itu benda pertama yang kamu kena check sebenarnya. Always make sure that your equation has been balanced. Okay? 
So stoichiometry can be used for calculating the species we are interested in during erection. So let's say given to you adalah info pasal A, okay? But the question are interested to know about B. So you can use uh, the stoichiometry relationship between A and B to identify the amount of B. Tapi initially, you are given about A. Uh, okay? Uh, so kita akan guna stoichiometry dekat situ nanti. Uh, okay? Untuk cari kita bagi kita, kamu diberi A tapi soalan nak B. Uh, okay? So kita boleh tengok relationship tu nanti. Alright. So kita tengok example 1 now. Okay, kita tengok example 1. So how many moles of hydrochloric acid is needed to react with 0.5 moles of zinc? So here ni very simple lah because you are given the mole already and soalan pun tanya pasal mole. So this is a very easy example sebenarnya. So in your notes, uh, actually dah ada sample jawapan dalam tu so the way miss uh, to list might be a little bit different so it's up to you you want to follow which one okay so uh, apa yang dia tak bagi kat sini kelas equation okay so uh, kang kadang soalan tak bagi equation but you have to write down on your own based on the question however uh, miss uh, miss mengakui this particular uh, question is uh, mungkin sedikit susah untuk kamu because dia tak mention anything about the product Okay, but don't worry. Usually, soalan akan bagi tahu juga apa produk yang terhasil. So untuk ini, Miss uh, bagi tahu lah apa dia punya equation. Okay, so HCl. Okay, so kita ada zinc. Kita react dengan HCl. So dia akan produce zinc chloride with hydrogen gas. So however, this one is not yet balanced. So zinc already balanced. Cl belum lagi kan? So HCl kena ada dua. Okay, nak balance dah. Okay, and then uh, tengok balik soalan. Okay, extract out all the information given to you. So you are asked about the mole of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so bermaksud ini yang kamu nak cari x mole. Okay, so misalnya tak x bawah HCl tu. And then uh, dia nak tahu pula berapa banyak mole of HCl react with 0.5 mole of zinc. Okay, so this is the zinc. So zinc pula dia dah bagi info dekat sini. Okay. So class given to you is about zinc. But the question are interested about HCl. Okay? Therefore you have to look at what is the relationship between the zinc and also hydrochloric acid. So what do we need to do? So you have to write down from the equation, okay ataupun from the balance equation, from the equation. So kita kena tengok dahulu apa stoichiometric relationship antara zinc dengan HCl. So it really depends on apa number of mole yang ada depan kita punya reactant tersebut okay so in this case one mole from the equation one mole of zinc so since both are reactants kan both are reactants so kita guna ayat one mole of zinc reacts with two mole of HCl Okay, but then given to you, given to you adalah 0.5 mole of zinc. And then you have to look for mole of HCl kan, which is the X mole lah. X mole HCl. Okay, therefore macam mana kita nak cari ni? So basically 1 mole bahagi 0.5. To divide by x Okay, dua-dua ni mol juga kan Okay, and then you rearrange again So, ataupun kamu flipkan dulu Letak dulu x tu berada dekat atas It's up to you, mana-mana yang senang untuk kamu Okay, uh, so kalau miss pun Miss terus buat darab silang ni lah So, x tu bawa ke sebelah kiri kan Okay, so dia akan jadi x equals to 2 hmm, darab 0.5 bahagi Satu, basically, dapat satu mol kan? Okay, satu mol. Alright. So, basically, satu mol ni adalah, siapa satu mol ni? Satu mol ni adalah HCl punya mol. Okay, so kita boleh tulislah mol HCl. Settle. Okay, so this one is very easy lah class because given to you dalam bentuk mol dah. Okay, 
uh, and then dia minta balik soalan pun minta balik mall okay very easy but keep in your mind bila diberi dalam soalan exam or whatever kadang-kadang dia start dengan mass dahulu lepas tu dia minta mass lagi kat belakang tu so yang tu panjang sikit proses dia okay tapi yang ni mesti tunjuk yang senang dulu untuk kita tengok relationship antara uh, dua benda okay so be careful lah so in this case tadi diberi kepada kamu dua-dua reaktan so what if dia bagi kamu reaktan and then dia minta pasal a uh, mole of hydrogen gas. Jadi dekat sini ayat kat sini kena be careful lah kamu kena cakap one mole of zinc produces one mole of hydrogen gas. Okey, so tengok ah apa benda yang diberi kepada kamu. Okey, kita tengok example 2. So this is another one. So again another example without equation, but don't worry if you are asked to write down equation dia memang akan bagi tahu apa produk apa semua. Okey. So dekat sini how many moles of H2O will be formed when uh, the ethanol burns in oxygen. So, ini dia punya equation C2H5OH tambah dengan oxygen gas. Dia akan produce carbon dioxide tambah dengan water. So, Miss nak kena balancekan dulu equation ni. Okay? Dua. Hmm, the next one adalah hydrogen. Hydrogen sebelah kiri ada enam. So, sini kena tiga. So, now oxygen... Oksigen ada 4 tambah 3, 7. So, sebelah kiri ni baru ada 3. So, ni 1 tak? So, 6, 3. Okay. Alright. Okay. Balance lah. Okay. So, this is balance already. Okay. And then, kita tengok balik soalan. Extract out all the information given to you. So, again, kat sini kita tengok. How many moles of H2O? Okay. So, H2O. Ini adalah yang dia interested with. So, mesti letak X mol kat situ. So, when 0.25 mol of C2H5OH burns in oxygen. Okay, so C2H5OH. Yang ni pula dia bagi info 0.25 mol. Okay, so here comes the part. Given info to you adalah reactant. However, the question are interested with product. Okay, so always make sure the equation has been balanced first. Sebab kalau equation kamu tak balance, your stoichiometry relationship pun jadi salah. Okay, so be careful. So, now... From the equation, so now since it is between reactant and also product, therefore kita akan kena tulis. So ni tengok berapa dia punya depan ni kan? So depan ni kosong, I mean like satu lah sebenarnya. Okay, so one mole of C2H5OH produces, so water pula, three, three moles of water. Okay. But then, given to you, C2H5OH, you only have 0 0.25 mol okay, of C2H5OH. Jadi, dekat sini adalah X mol of water. Okay, and then, buat benda yang sama lah. Okay, so kita kena calculate now. Therefore, 1 divided by 0 0.25 equals to 3 divided by X. Therefore, X is basically 3 times 0 0.25. So, this one you will get 0 0.75 mole. Okay, mole siapa ni? Mole water. So, kita labelkan properly. Okay, so boleh buat macam ni. Settle. Again, sekali lagi, this one is very simple because given to you mall soalan minta mall sangat senang ok but then ok so this is basically um, pathway yang kamu boleh follow lah uh, ok uh, depends dengan apa yang dia bagi ke kamu let's say given to you adalah mass ok mass of A ok mass of A therefore you have to look for the mole of A dahulu so gunalah formula yang kamu dah belajar in previous chapter ok cari dulu mole of A ni lepas tu baru kamu tengok sebab soalan pula mungkin dia minta uh, mass of B okay? Given to you info mass of A Tapi soalan minta mass of B So inilah root yang kamu kena lalu So daripada mass of A tu Cari dulu mole of A okay? Daripada situ kamu boleh tengok Stoichiometry relationship antara A dengan B Therefore kamu boleh cari mole of B Dah jumpa mole of B And then kamu carilah untuk mass of B pula ha, So banyak sikit lah okay? So kadang-kadang mungkin dia bagi pasal molarity Tapi minta mass uh, so again, let's say molarity yang dia bagi adalah molarity X. So you have to look for the mole of X dahulu. Okay, but then dia minta pasal mass of Y. So gunakan stoichiometry relationship yang kamu tahu untuk cari mole of Y. Daripada situ, Y20 barulah kamu boleh cari mass of Y. Okay, so semuanya kelas yang penting adalah kena lalu 
mall ni okay mall of benda yang diberi lepas tu kamu kena cari mall of benda yang kamu interested with okay Uh, and satu lagi benda penting adalah equation. Okay, always make sure ada equation yang balance. Therefore, let's have a look at example three. So this will be the last example. Okay, so a 16.50 ml of 0.1327 molar KMnO4 solution is needed to oxidize 20 ml of a Fe SO4 solution in an acidic medium. Okay, ada banyak info dia bagi ni. Ini adalah acidic medium. Okay, then what is the concentration of the FeSO4 solution? Alright, okay. So now, uh, what you have to do adalah keluarkan dahulu info yang ada kan? Okay, so, um, tapi kalau kamu perasan, okay, dalam sini, dalam soalan, dia bagi KMnO4. Tapi if you have a look at the uh, equation, there's no... K pun kan? Ok, tapi MnO4 minus ada. So, apa sebenarnya yang kamu boleh tengok kat sini? Apa yang kamu boleh anggap kat sini? Dia abaikan K tu. Ok, dia abaikan K. Kenapa dia nak abaikan K? Ok, because K is a spectator ion. So, I might have introduced to you what is spectator ion. I might not have yet. Ok, but Miss akan akan ataupun sudah pun bagi tahu kat kamu pasal spectator ion ni uh, waktu dalam kelas. Ok, waktu sesi tutorial. Okay, so uh, basically KMnO4 ni, ni MnO4 negatif ni itu adalah mewakili KMnO4. Okay, and then kalau kamu tengok pula, satu lagi adalah pasal FeSO4 solution. Okay, so uh, FeSO4 solution, kalau kamu tengok, tak ada pun FeSO4. SO4 pun tak ada, tapi ada Fe. Tapi Fe pula ada dua. Okay, so be careful. Okay, so kamu kena ingat FeSO4 ni kalau dia berpisah menghasilkan ion, kamu akan dapat SO4 2 minus and also ion dia pula akan dapat Fe 2 plus. Okay, so FeSO4 ni kat sini sebenarnya kalau kamu baca konteks ayat tu sendiri pun, you will realize that it is talking about the KMnO4 solution is reacting with the FeSO4. So of course the FeSO4 supposed to be somewhere dekat bahagian reactant juga. Okay. Uh, so, yang ni adalah Fe2 plus ni yang datang daripada FeSO4. Okay, meanwhile the MnO4 minus is the one yang datang daripada KMnO4. So again, sekali lagi Miss tegaskan kat sini, mana hilangnya K, mana hilangnya SO4. That is because both of them are spectator ions. Okay, alright. So let's um, extract out all the information given to you. Okay, jadi kat sini tadi, given to you the info of MnO4 minus ni, okay, MnO4 ni kan, dia bagi info 16.5 ml, volume dia bagi, okay, and then dia bagi info juga molarity, 0.1327 molarity of MnO4, okay, and then dia tanya, uh, is needed to oxidize, 20 ml of FeSO4. So untuk Fe2+ pula kita ada 20 ml. Okay, in acidic medium. And then the question asks what is the concentration of FeSO4 solution? Okay, again masih lagi FeSO4. So dia tanya pasal concentration of Fe2+ ni sebenarnya. Okay, so mis letak x molar dekat sini. So ini yang kita nak cari. Given info to you adalah pasal MnO4 negatif. And you are interested with Fe2+, because ini yang kamu nak cari. Okay, so you are interested with this. So basically class, you are given pasal, uh, pasal apa ni? Molarity, okay, in terms of molarity. Uh, okay, dia bukannya bagi terus mol, kan? Uh, senangnya kalau macam dia bagi mol terus. Okay, tapi always double check dahulu class whether the equation has been balanced or not. So somehow kat sini, equation dia bagi dah balance lah. Okay, but then you can always double check. Untung kalau soalan dia bagi a balance equation, okay? Sebab dia memudahkan, dia kurang satu step nak kena balance semua tu. Okay, jadi apa yang kamu, kalau kita tengok balik stoichiometry pathway kat sini, so given to you adalah pasal molar concentration of MnO4 negatif tadi kan meaning you have to look for the mole of MnO4 negatif dahulu and then dapat situ you do the stoichiometry relationship then you will get the mole untuk Fe2 plus daripada mole of Fe2 plus nanti barulah kamu kena cari pula again sekali lagi molar concentration tapi untuk Fe2 plus lah, ok so kita kena lalu pathway tu lah, 
Okay, jadi first one tadi adalah to look for mole of uh, mn of 4 negative. Okay, given to you molarity with volume. Okay, therefore yang ni adalah molarity darab dengan volume. And keep in your mind, volume untuk molarity is always in liter. Okay, therefore you have to convert dahulu value ni nanti. Okay, uh, so molarity dah diberi kepada kamu 0 0.1327 and then that one you have to convert it so misses letak 16.50 bahagi 1000 therefore if i use calculator so make sure class since this is info pasal mno4 negative of course the molarity you need to use the molarity of mno4 negative and of course the volume it needs to be the volume of mno4 negative Jangan guna volume Fe2 plus pula. Okay. Therefore, what you will get here is. Okay, ada banyak value lah sebenarnya. Miss tak tahu. Miss dapat tunjuk ke tak dengan kamu sebenarnya. Okay, tak apalah. Miss tulis je. Okay, so dia bagi nama untuk eksponen. 1896 eksponen negatif 3 mol. Jangan lupa unit lah. Okay, so now since kamu dah ada mol. Kita akan proceed with the stoichiometry relationship. Macam mana? Kita kena tengok equation. Jadi, kita boleh tahu yang from the equation, from the equation, relationship antara Fe2 plus 5 mol of Fe2 plus reacts with. Sorry, ha, cantiknya tulisan miss kan. Tepat nanti kamu pun make sure kamu buat kemas ke. Okay? Eh, reacts with um, 1 mol 1 mol of MnO4 negative hmm. Miss tak suka sebenarnya buat macam ni Tapi Miss susah nak padam okay? uh, So nanti make sure ada 1 mol of MnO4 negative okay, Jadi uh, you have the mol of MnO4 dah sebenarnya kan So mol of MnO4 ni kamu dah ada okay, So kamu tulislah So 2.1896 exponent negative 3 mol MnO4 Okay, itu yang kamu dah ada. Okay, but then, the mol of Fe2 plus, kamu tak ada lagi. So, mesti letak sini sebagai x mol dan x mol of Fe2 plus. Itu yang kamu tak ada lagi. Jadi, now, kita nak cari value x tu lah. Jadi, basically, uh, miss bawa ke atas ni lah. So, 5 bahagi x is equals to 1 divide by 2.1896 exponent negative 3. Okay. So, kita just sama ada kamu flip dulu. Kalau miss-miss lagi suka flipkan. Okay. So, kita flipkan. So, what you will get is x is equals to 2.1896 exponent negative 3 darab dengan 5. Therefore, what you will get is 2.1896 exponent negative 3 darab 5. Kamu akan dapat 0 0.010948 hmm, Tulislah semua tu Walaupun ni dah ada sampai 6 decimal point Tulis je lah okay. So apa benda X ni tadi kelas X ni tadi adalah mol of Fe2 plus okay. So kita dah jumpa mol of Fe2 plus Adakah itu yang kita nak okay. No belum lagi kita nak cari Molarity. Okay, you want to look for molarity of Fe2 plus. But you only have the mol. Okay, kamu baru ada mol kat sini. Jadi, tapi jangan lupa dia dah bagi volume untuk Fe2 plus. So, you can look for that. Jadi, now kita nak cari molarity. So, sekali lagi kita guna formula molarity. But specifically, you are looking for molarity of Fe2 plus. Therefore, mol yang kamu nak pakai kat sini adalah mol of Fe2 plus. Okay, volume yang kamu nak pakai kat sini pun adalah volume of Fe2 plus. And make sure volume kena dalam unit liter. Okay, so since kamu dah ada mol 0.010948 mol. Okay, bahagi Allah pakailah baris lah. Bahagi dengan 20 darab 10 negative 3. 10 negative 3 tu bahagi 1000 lah sebenarnya. Okay, yang ni pula dalam liter. Therefore, 20 bahagi eh no, 0.01098 bahagi 20. You will get 0.5474 mol per 
liter ataupun kalau kamu nak guna M besar je pun boleh ataupun kalau nak guna mol per decimeter cube pun boleh kalau kamu instead of kamu guna liter kamu guna dm3 kan pun boleh juga okey so kalau kamu compare dengan jawapan kat sebelah ni samakan c 0.5474 So, point is dapat 0.5474, okay? So, this one is a little bit long lah, dia punya working solution. So, you can refer to the pathway, okay? Untuk kamu tahu apa yang kamu nak buat. Compared to example 1 and example 2, that one is quite straightforward because you are only given in terms of mol. Soalan pun minta mol balik, okay? Very senang. Kalau kamu tengok pathway tu tadi, dia kat bahagian tengah-tengah tu je sebenarnya. Okay, tapi for this question, dia daripada yang info yang concentration tu tadi, nak pergi ke concentration yang yang kamu interested with. Okay, so steps dia panjang sikit. And Miss Kasa, kalau waktu consultation kita banyak kali dah Miss pesan, uh, tolong make sure tulis formula. Okay, and kalau boleh tulis juga kamu tengah cari mall tu, mall siapa sebenarnya. Okay, macam ni Miss specific ni Miss tulis mall untuk M and O for negative. Yang ni pula uh, macam kat sini, mall untuk F E2 plus. Be clear, make sure you label properly. Okay. And then, uh, now it's your turn to try on your own. Try this 5.0. Uh, okay, and then I think this one tak ada masalah sangat. And satu lagi soalan adalah try this 6.0. Okay, so again, sekali lagi kat sini. Um, kamu akan jumpa macam K2 CR207 ni kan. Tapi, kat sini tak nampak pun K. Okay, dia cuma keluarkan. Dia keluarkan the K. Sebab K2 tadi adalah uh, the spectator ion okey tapi dia dah specifically cakap CR207 to minus 2 CR3 plus yang ni pula adalah Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus so kamu dah ada miss bagi hint jelah okey nanti kamu baca soalan properly tapi miss nak bagi hint this will be your first half equation and this will be your second half equation okey therefore you have to balance guna yang ion electron method yang follow steps Rauche tu okey so guna dahulu yang tu untuk cari a balance equation dan daripada situ, kamu kena uh, cari pula lah apa soalan tu nak. Uh, okay, nanti kamu buat sendiri yang ni. Alright, so as penutup kita hari ni. Okay, so there are times you do not have to explain yourself to anyone because the person who likes you doesn't need it uh, and the person who dislike you won't believe it. Okay, so it's quite true lah. Uh, okay, kalau kalau orang dah tak suka kita tu, kita cakap apa pun, dia orang memang tak percaya dah. Okay, but those person who cares about us, they usually, like, they trust us, kan? So, there, there's no need for us to explain things. But, Miss Nak, just nak cakap sikit. So, dia ada mention about, there are times you do not have to explain yourself to anyone. Ada masanya yang kamu tak perlu explain to anyone. Tapi, kebanyakan masanya, kalau boleh, explain lah. Okay, especially to those people yang uh, care about kamu. Okay. Uh, because tak semua orang faham sebenarnya kalau tanpa kamu bagi tahu dia orang sebenarnya faham kah that uh, memang there are many people who care about us okay but dia orang bukannya boleh baca isi hati kamu ataupun fikiran kamu so there are things that you have to tell the people who care about you or those who likes you okay kadang kamu kena communicate okay so keywords dekat sini adalah communicate Okay, so no matter how uneasy ataupun uncomfortable benda tu sebenarnya, okay, so do let it out because that is one way of healing. Okay, one of the most effective ways to heal actually, okay, by letting it all out. So communicate, okay, jangan just diam je, expect orang faham kamu. No, kadang-kadang orang tak boleh nak faham pun without kamu explain yourself okay but bila kita compare antara orang yang suka kita dengan orang yang tak suka kita uh, jangan risau sangatlah orang yang suka kita tu kadang-kadang kita tak payah explain apa pun dia orang boleh jak terima kita lagi uh, okay but communicate communicate guys communicate alright that's all <laughs> bye bye